Oh, hello everybody. Um, yesterday didn't materialise at all. Um, that's because I had a graphics tablet for sale and um, there was a student that wanted it down in Falmouth that was at the uni there and he didn't have any transport so we decided to, of course, drop it off for him. And so he's, he's happy now. Um, and so I didn't really get back till later and you know once I sort of got back home really I had things to do so I didn't actually come in my studio and do what I was going to do I was going to do all the cut all the ephemera out and things like that so anyway I'll save that for another day I might actually do that this evening so it's ready for tomorrow oh I'm not around tomorrow because I'm at the Exeter tomorrow because they've got their annual craft show um you know the creative craft show so we I go I went last year and I went the year before and previous to that I went like 10 years ago, 15 years ago and that sort of thing. So, but yeah, we're all going, me, Tina and Janet are going down there on the train tomorrow or up there, I should say. And um, really looking forward to it. Nice to have a little spending spree. Right. So what I thought I would do in the beginning is because I'm, I'm getting to needing to embellish the tags and some of the pages. So I thought it's best that I start here you know with this again with some dyeing all right I've, I've got quite a lot of blue and things that are already pre-done you know anyway but I thought well I'll still dye some more because I you know always need blue the first thing I'll show you is this is some of this beautiful trim that I absolutely adore okay and I want it blue not pink even though that would still go with the journal, but I want some blue. So again, permanent marker. You can use a Sharpie or anything, really. And I colour them in. Yeah, and all I do is literally just gently go over the top of the fabric and change the colour. And because we've already got colour in them with the pink, you know, it... Um, gives a different depth and each I don't know whether you can see okay the varying colors because of the various colors that's underlying here gives a different tone effect through that I love it so that's great so I, I won't do the, all these now but I shall go ahead and do a load of those up you know a bit of a strand I love the color don't get me wrong I love what's there but sometimes I want blue and I haven't got blue so I make it all right so don't think because you haven't got a color of a certain thing that you can't change it okay permanent markers are quite good or paint with a bit of um we use fabric like this fabric glue with a even more colours, don't you? And it makes it permanent. Sorry, I'd have to look up the name. Oh, no, it might be here. Oh, yeah, fab fabric medium. Yeah. I mean, you mix that with watercolour, apparently. I haven't used it yet, and it becomes a permanent for fabric. So, yet to do that. But I know my sister's done it, and it works, so. Right. So that's that bit. And then I thought I would choose some things here, yeah, just some scrag ends. Like, like I said, I don't need a lot, so I'll just dye a few little bits and pieces. Um, all different colours. Um, the only pure white I have is that gauze there, that, and these, the neck curtains. There. The rest, that I mean, the green, I'm, I want to put the blue on, see what happens. It should come out a deeper blue. Okay, and because we're using, I'm going to use the blue print sketch because you're using that on everything, and all these are different tones. Yeah, you should get a different tone within the color that you've used. Yeah, instead of needing a different tone here, because you've used a different tone here, you should get end up different tones so we shall see oh and I got some of the the creepy stuff that I buy every year um that one there I did buy one to show you the packaging because Halloween and honestly buy them after after Halloween because they're all half price sometimes you get these for 20 pence after 
and they are invaluable. Right, lovely, lovely stuff because you can dye them and you can, you know, use them for all different things. So I've got a bit of that in, see what happens. So I don't think I've dyed this one before. Um, what else have I got? Just a bit of vintage lace and I know it takes well on that. Not vintage but looks vintage. Tiny bit of seam binding, some of that scraggy bits there and I've also got some of that that's already been tea stained yeah and then I have got some that hasn't been tea stained so it'll be nice to see the difference in the same colour there yeah so let's have a bit of fun <laughs> I hope this one I should do a little bit really because I haven't tested it because it's quite blue right is it the oxygen that's distress Right, Distress Oxide. I prefer the ink in this colour for dyeing. It doesn't go... It, it, I love um, Distress Ink for dyeing. It's just because it's slightly transparent and I think it looks better. Uh, I'm trying to look for water. But anyway. I don't want it to go cloudy as such. Right, I'm going to... So I haven't tried this at all, so I'm definitely going to wet it down. Yeah. Okay, I'm thinking. Oh, no, actually, that might be okay. So I'm just looking at the tone. I know it's wet, it's going to dry a lot lighter. I, I think we might be okay, actually. Yeah. Let's make sure that's done there. I mean, like I say, you sometimes have to do this a couple of times, okay? Now look at the different coming out blue coming out of there now. It's purple. It's amazing, isn't it? That's the oxide, not the I haven't got that one in distress ink. I know I haven't. So that's a new colour I bought. Right, okay. Well, let's do a bit of green. So I need to wet this down. I'm going to wet it all down in a minute. It doesn't go patchy so much if you wet it down before you do it. But if you want it patchy looking, do it dry. <laughs> let's put this green in. Put it seam bind in. I think that one's going to go patchy by the look of it. See, and that's gone lilac. Isn't that, no, isn't that amazing? Because you saw that change. It's, you know, it uses exactly the same product. But see, Distress Ink doesn't do that. But that's still, we're still okay in the colour tone. And I'm actually loving it. So but it's amazing, the difference. Yeah, right, I have to do a bit more and then, or oh, I'll do some of that. That's going to go lilac key because that's white. So we've got a true colour. And let's do a bit of that. I'll do that next time. Right. Yeah, look at that, how lilac that is. Love it. It's still fine. Yeah. But again, dry lighter. Right, I'm just going to mop that up and we can start again. A new little bit of a book page. Doily, this is what I do. <laughs> okay, I'm not use them again yet, those ones. Water. And this is the one that's already coffee stained. Okay. So in theory, should come out a little bit darker, yeah. Right, this is the creepy stuff. Let's get a bit of that on there.
Okay. Right, so I'm gonna, I slightly dried it with a heat gun because I haven't got no heat on today and it's not nice enough outside to dry it. Plus, I want to transfer some of the ink that's left in, the, in this onto paper because I use these as well. Okay, so I just sort of lay it down and iron it just to get the moisture out. I mean, it's still not 100% dry, but that's all right. And just to transfer, that, that I've already done this one, so all right, let's do that. Let's have a little bit of this. And get some of my, and some, you know, look at that, it's great. <laughs> my crazy patterns going on in the background. I'm making use of that ink that we got left on there. That's great. You know, yeah, it's a bit lighter and a little bit patchy, but again, it all tones in. Yeah, with what I'm doing. I'm not so much with the green now, yeah, but with the blue. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and after all, you know, if it doesn't work the first time, just do it again. You know, it's it's and again, it's just scrag ends that I'm using for my clusters. Um, it's great. Let's put a bit more in here. So I'm two, doing two jobs at once here. Transparing a bit of the ink and drying. Okay. I don't go overboard. Do another one. Got little bits of purple in this one. And to be honest, once it's heat set, it doesn't seem to move. I mean, yes, it most probably would if you re-wetted it. Yes, it would. All right, but I haven't had any trouble. I'm sure, Leigh, you can most probably put in, like I said, that fabric medium with it. When it's on here, perhaps that might stabilise it. You know, if you're worried about it. I'm not worried. I've not had a problem, so... Yep, so I'll go ahead and finish that. I mean, look at that. It's a nice bit of purple going on. Try that it's picked up the colour underneath as well, which I don't mind. I like I like what's happened here. I don't know what it's picked up on there, but I like it. <laughs> this is one of these little travel irons. Got to remember to clean it. <laughs> right. Okay, so I'll go ahead and finish these off, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so they're all they're all dry. I did go ahead and do some rosettes because I actually forgot, so I did go ahead and do those, and it's gorgeous. The only thing I will say I can foresee is I wish I'd have done this first before adding the fabric to my journal. <coughs> because, uh, sorry, excuse me, some of this is, that blends okay, but I'm not quite sure whether this does, but it has got the deeper blue, you might not be able, to, sorry, be able to pick it up on screen, but it has got a deeper blue through that. So I might get away with it, we'd say using a bit of this as well. So we'll see, anyway. But if I had done this first, that would that would have gone absolutely brilliantly. But I didn't, did I? <laughs> but anyway, now I know I got a nice blue because I I didn't. That's all I had was what you saw. It's this bit here, so which was very little. Oh, and that's my blue things that I which could most probably do with another coat. And I don't think I showed you what pen it was. Sorry, it's something on the. It's TB4 and it's the Spectrum, Spectrum Noir. Let's say I've had these a long time, so 
when they first come out actually. <laughs> so I don't know how many years ago were that, quite a few. Um, is it Crate and Craft back then? Something like that. Okay, so I'm, you know, I'm a little bit like, oh, I wish I'd have done that first now because that colour for this journal would have been perfect. But anyway, we shall see. I want to make some clusters. So, and I'll put that away. And I've got some tickets and some odd bits and silly bits. <laughs> so, I'm going to make some clusters, I think. Let's have a look. Because we do use them a lot. Let's take that straight edge off of there. I know you've seen me do these before. But, right, let's get some fabric out. I'm going to incorporate a bit of that now and again. Just uh, oh, some nice little pieces here. But as for that dye in that fabric, I mean, don't get me wrong, if you want perfectly dyed fabric, then please use the appropriate dye for the fabric. This is just a make-do. Okay, and also, if you haven't got um, the distress inks, you can actually water down acrylic and it does work on some, you know, some fab fabrics are harder than another, but I have used it. Years ago, I died, when I first got married, I dyed all my um, silk flowers with acrylic, liquid acrylic. So yes, it does work and it was fine. Just to, because I had quite a different tone in my bouquet, bouquet I was using and I had to, I couldn't find any, <laughs> any flowers that colour, so I ended up having to dye all my own colour, all my own flowers. Cut them in threes and then go from there really. Okay, let's get on with this then. Well, I think I know what I'm going to do, similar to my other ones really, but of course different colours, so they always look different. Let's put a bit of glue on there. Oh, this cold just won't shift. It's all in my sinuses still. I've been getting like um, toothache and all that sort of thing. But anyway, it will get better eventually. Okay, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to sew them, don't need to, actually, those. Um, I'm only doing them like that because when I put them in, I might add a little bit more later on. I'm not sure. It's not classed as finished that way. That's, that's my husband banging away. <laughs> all right, let's have a look. Do we want another bit of blue? What do we have? Let's go another way today. Keep that there. Yep, I can see myself using a bit of this today. <laughs> I'm liking it. Yeah, I bought it last year. I think I got a video on it actually. It's in one of my journals. Maybe my um, autumn one, I think I used it last year. I know, I think I bought it in the co op. It was about, I don't know, 20 pence for. Once they marked everything down, they was left over with some stuff and all right, let's tick it or something. Oh, let's have a look at it. Got something contrast in there, don't we? Oh, I might use a bit of
nice little raggedies. All right, I'm going to make some smaller ones. Which are quite light, the quite dainty ones. A couple of big ones are good. They're a bit of doilies, perhaps. Right, yes, this is where everything gets a little bit closed in. I will say, I feel like I want some just little bits that are already cut, which I usually do. All right, let's have a look. A bit of neck hurt in here. I just scruff that up a bit. Looking a bit neat. I'll trim a bit of that off. I don't quite want it so big. Okay, where is that with there? That one there, rather. Yeah, I used some of that. That was again, that was some of that. Okay, and I just, you know, took some pieces out like that because I actually love it. Okay, because it all comes apart. It's brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Right. Oh, that's a nice flowery bit. So. I need to put some ink on this sponge. I haven't got any. 
Uh, that was tea stain, that one. Right, do I want one down the page? I do. Let's maybe have a bit of this. Oops. Sorry, I like those numbers showing more. Right, I need white ones wherever you are. You're hiding from me. I've got one there. This is where we get messy. <laughs> oh, I've only got that bit left already, look. Should have done some more of that, definitely. Seems like that's going to be the popular one. There they are. Okay. I sort of want that one down the page, might not be finished yet, but it's a good base. Yeah, they're all good bases. Because you can finish off with a few gems, buttons and things like that. I really like that one, I want some more little ones. Because <laughs> I found them absolutely brilliant to use last, last time. Oh, let's have a bit of vellum. And that was the vellum I done with the permanent markers. Everyone was wondering how I'm going to incorporate it. Yeah, and let's have a bit of lace up the top. I carried on and finished off a few. So some are finished, some aren't. Um, some little bits. Okay, that is one there. A 
I didn't want you to see everything I've done on them. I mean, that one's not finished, but I've just done it. There we go. That's one of the little stamps I ripped up. That's quite cute. The way that, sorry. You see? So that's just a little stamp. And it had that nice blue, exactly the same colours. And this one's not done either. And I had a look at them on the tags and they look great. <laughs> Okay, there's one to go down the page that way. So I shouldn't move like that. There's one, bits of fluff. There's the raggedy ones. I like the raggedy ones. Another one for go down the page, but it's not finished. So one there with a stamp. I just put that all that together. And that one goes there. Some little ones. It's a neater one. And there. I like that one. Yeah, so it's got those done. What's that way, I think? And that's unfinished. A couple more that's unfinished. I just put a few bits together to make a start. And that's just an inky bit of paper, look. <laughs> it worked out great. Got a bit of a doily in this one. Another raggedy. Oh, it's just a bit I've done, put together. Another big one there. Okay, and I tested them on these tags with the best colour for this. I mean, you know, when you think that could go there on a the tag. And then some stuff up here, and you've got yourself a tag. All done. But yeah, they would look nice there, like that. You see? So, again, we're, it's very similar to the other one I've done. And I've got all my bits ready to put in the journal and around it. And I usually get a few left over, but that's fine. And then to decorate the tags, I'll do the decorating the tags in another video. Uh, I've got loads of things now ready to do that, okay, and even these I can use and then add a little flower to it, all right, so they're all in my little pot, ready, and I'll put that close by me for inspiration, <laughs> right, oh, and I've got, I got that braid from the show, and I, that goes again beautifully, this is nice, goes really nicely with it, so I'm going to use a bit of that. So what I ha what I did notice this core because I went ahead like I think I said in the first bit of the video this doesn't really sort of go that much with there not uh, not really it's okay I can get away with it um, but what I would do I would on some of the ones I haven't like this one perhaps I would use a bit of this on here. All right, to bring that colour in as well to go through the journal, all right, which I've got to do because I've got to rip some more of that off. Um, that was quite nice. It's quite delicate. Now that would that would sit nicely there. And you've got some fluffy bits. Make that look better there. Yeah. I mean, some of these look nice just on the page up there. Like that. Okay. So that's how I use them. Which I'm sure you're getting used to me now, doing, seeing what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, well, let's have a look. Oh, so you don't need anything on here. I might put some pom-pom trim down on this one or a bit of something hanging down here. But, I, you know, that that's fine on its own. So, I'm quite happy with that. that. I found that envelope and I thought that goes nicely. So, yeah, and that goes that goes fine as well. Okay.